What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the five things that you will never see winning poker players do. If you see anybody at your poker table doing these five things, chances are you're in a good poker game full of fish and you should stick around. All right guys, so counting down from five to one, here we go. Number five is overplaying top pair. Now guys, all good winning poker players know that you need to play cautiously with top pair with a hundred big blind stacks. And by the way, I just want to be clear throughout this video, I am talking about deeper stacks like you will find in cash games or at the beginning of a tournament. I'm not talking about the mid or late stages specifically of a tournament where you often have 20 big blinds or so and the strategy is going to be totally different in a situation like that. But in most situations with deep stacks and poker, when you have top pair, you do not want to be ramming and jamming and going all in. As I'm going to give you examples for all five unfortunate poker plays on this list, you have ace 10 of hearts and the flop comes down with a 10 of spades, 9 of spades, and 8 of diamonds. Guys, all winning poker players know in a situation like this to just check call. We're going to assume you're out of position in this hand, you're acting first. What you do not want to be doing is making a big bet in this situation to induce a raise from an aggressive player, and you also, even worse, you do not want to be check raising in this situation. Let's talk about why. Guys, the biggest thing that I hope some of you savvy winning poker players already noticed about this board is that while we do have top pair top kicker awesome that's always great this is a highly coordinated wet board meaning that there are multiple made straights flush draws two pairs trips set possibilities and more let me give you just a few of the hands that already have a smoked here queen jack flopped a nut straight seven six flopped a straight pocket tens pocket nines and pocket eights all flopped a set and have us nearly drawing dead 10-9 has top two pair. 9-8 is bottom two pair. Guys, I could go on and on. There's over pairs. There's massive pair plus combo flush draws. There are a lot of ways for us to be significantly behind in this situation. Guys, not all top pairs were created equal in poker, and that is why your best bet in this situation is to manage the size of the pot, keep the pot low right now, and allow an aggressive player to bluff at it. But let's move on to thing number four that you're never going to see winning poker players do and that is bluffing the fish. Guys I've talked about this one endlessly on the channel here. You don't make money by trying to bluff the people at the poker table who don't like to fold aka the fish. These are the recreational players who just play the game for fun. They're not there trying to win specifically. If they do win that's just kind of a bonus. They're not watching videos like this. They don't take the game seriously like you. So therefore in small stakes games in particular Particular, where often the size of the bet is little more than the price of a Starbucks latte or a movie ticket, they're just going to call you down, guys. Your 28th level thinking that you saw Phil Helmuth do at a million dollar cash game is just going to go completely over their head and they're going to call you down. Let me give you an example once again. You've got Ace Queen offsuit versus one of our fishy friends, and by the river, the board is King Jack 743 with three diamonds on the board. Guys, you should just check and give up in this situation. I know it is painful. We have one of the best hands you can be dealt, ace, queen, top 10 hand, premium hand. But guys, in a situation like this, all winning poker players know that you can't win them all. This is a pot where if we make a bet here, it is very likely that this player is going to call us with any king, jack, seven, four, three. There are multiple straight possibilities on this board as well. Guys, bottom line, do not try to force a player who doesn't like to fold out of the pot in a situation like this. It's literally digging your own grave in this game. No winning poker player is ever going to do that. Let's move on to thing number three that they'll never do either, which is playing draws passively. Guys, all winning poker players know that straight and flush draws have roughly around 30% equity on the flop. And what I mean by that is those are roughly the odds that you have to win the hand by the rivers. So guys, we don't need to be a math genius to understand that around 70% of the time, we're not going to hit our draw. And therefore, just calling in a situation like this is not going to be a profitable strategy. In fact, it's going to be a losing strategy. So what winning poker players understand is that you need to give yourself more ways to win with your draws. Let me give an example once again. You've got 10 nine of hearts, nice little hand. By the way, if you wanna know what hands I suggest playing in all situations, I have charts and diagrams in my free poker cheat sheet and I'll link that up in the description below. But flop comes down with the eight of spades, jack of clubs and five of hearts. So pretty good flop for a hand here. 
we have an open-ended straight draw giving us eight outs meaning that any seven or queen that comes on the turn and river will give us the nut straight and hopefully some of you savvy winning poker players also see the heart on the flop there meaning that we have a backdoor flush draw as well if it came heart heart on the turn and river we would make a nearly unbeatable flush however guys we already just went through the math we know that most of the time if this player has a hand like top pair for example say they've got king jack king jack is a strong statistical favorite in this hand even though we have a decent draw here so therefore sometimes i want to be very clear i'm not doing this all the time sometimes you should choose to raise here instead of just calling this is going to give you two ways to win this pot instead of just one because when you call you are basically relying on making the best hand in order to win the pot but when you choose to raise instead you can potentially make a better hand fold right now and let's face it pretty much every hand is better than ours we only have 10 high now obviously if they have a hand like king jack we're not going to make them fold but guys we need to always remember that we're playing against a range of hands in poker we're not playing against one specific hand that's the stuff for hollywood movies that's not how modern poker players think in the modern era of poker there are many more hands in their range such as ace deuce for nothing pocket sixes for third pair these are also hands that are in this player's range that they're going to be making a bet with often on this flop and if we make a raise it is very likely that we can push these hands out and both of these hands ace deuce and pocket sixes are technically ahead of our 10 high for absolutely nothing so guys bottom Bottom line, all winning poker players know that when you give yourself two ways to win with your draws instead of just one by only calling, it's ultimately going to be much more profitable. Let's move on to thing number two that you're never going to see winning poker players do at the table, and this is paying off the nits. Guys, all winning poker players know who the nit or the rock is at the poker table. This is the guy or the girl that's been sitting in the corner for the last hour, half an hour, whatever, sitting there waiting for their pocket kings, waiting for their pocket aces, or we're trying to hit some sort of monster flop where they flop a flush, a two pair, something like that. This is the kind of player, guys, who does not put any kind of significant money in the pot unless they have the nuts. And what I mean by that is essentially one of the best hands possible. These players are absolutely everywhere in today's games if you play small stakes, which is what 95% of people play. And it's important, guys, to not play into their game. Let me give you an example. Once again, you've got pocket aces and a rock raises you on the turn of nine of diamonds jack of spades eight of diamonds and five of clubs now hopefully you guys have already seen from our previous example that this is another one of those highly coordinated and wet boards where there are multiple draws multiple made straights and a ton of different two pair and set possibilities queen 10 flop the nut straight seven six has made a straight by the turn there are multiple sets with pocket nines pocket jacks pocket eights pocket fives there are massive combo draws with a king jack of diamonds. I could go on and on, guys. The bottom line is that when a tight player raises you on what I call the big money streets, that's the turn and river, as I talk about in my first poker book, Crush into Micro Stakes, when the tightest player at the table raises you on the turn, it is usually the nuts, and when they raise you on the river, it is always the nuts. Guys, when somebody literally has one of the best hands possible, you cannot outplay them. There is no point. They're not going to fold their hand, and therefore, I know know it's painful. I know a lot of amateurs and beginners have a lot of difficulty folding a hand like pocket aces, but guys, you need to understand the board texture in a situation like this, and more importantly, recognize what player type you're up against and realize that they're never bluffing when they raise you on the turn here, guys. They're always doing this with two pair or more, and you've literally got five or 10% equity going into the river. Not very good odds, and you could be completely drawing dead if they've already got a made straight with a hand like queen jack or seven six let's move on to the number one thing that you will never see winning poker players doing and guys i've talked about this one so many times this will completely destroy your poker career your results everything and that is getting emotional over every single bad beat guys the biggest separator between winning poker players and everybody else is that they understand the math of the game they understand that losing is simply a part of the game guys it doesn't matter how good you are it doesn't matter if your name is Daniel Negreanu or Phil Ivey. You're going to have losing days. This is how the game is set up so that the weaker players can get lucky sometimes, which allows
allows them to explain all of their losses away on their so-called bad luck and keep reloading money again and again, which fuels the entire industry, including your profits. So guys, for example, you've got two red kings. You need to understand that you're going to lose close to 20% of the time versus a hand like pocket eights, for example. You could honestly put any random hand there, guys. They're going to have 10%, 15% equity, even if you've got pocket kings or pocket aces. And it's not a big shocker when this comes in, guys. We're talking about one out of seven times, one out of five times. And it is certainly not mathematically impossible for that to happen multiple times in a row. But a lot of people get this idea in their head that when they have a hand like pocket kings, that it is a license to print money. And it simply isn't, guys. It's not the way the game is set up. And that's the beautiful thing about poker, by the way. Other games like chess or MMA or something like that, you're not going to beat the best fighter in the world, guys, or Magnus Carlsen at chess. They're just going to beat you because they're better than you because there's no element of luck in those games. In poker, the reason why it's so profitable, the reason why we've got million dollar final tables and so much money in this game is because the weaker players can get lucky sometimes. So you should celebrate this. You should be happy when you get a bad beat. I call it the fish tax that we all play. You can call it whatever you want. Bottom line, guys, next time you get a bad beat at the table, it doesn't mean that the game is rigged against you, that the site is fixed or something. It's actually just math. All right, guys, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you want to know my entire strategy to smash the small and mid stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That will be the top link in the description below that will give you everything you need to know. There are charts, diagrams showing you exactly what hands to play in all situations, when to bet, raise, full bluff, all that stuff. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.